don't know if you're aware of this, but over the decades, we've lost H-bombs. It happens. Uh, I suppose the Russians have, too, except they don't talk about it. But we did. In 1968, a U.S. plane carrying four H-bombs crashed into sea ice in Greenland and exploded and contaminated the area with radiation. It was called Operation Chrome Dome. It was a U.S. airborne alert program. It was initiated in 1961 during the Cold War. I'm going to explain what the Cold War is because there's younger people who watch the series. And, you know, they haven't been on the planet long and they don't know. The Cold War was, it's okay, you learn, right? Uh, Cold War was the communist states, Russia, China, Cuba, a lot of others, that uh, we were in a cold, a cold War, a war without shooting uh, for, boy, what? since after World War II, it kind of more or less ended in the 80s, early 90s. But it was a tense situation on this planet for a long time. Uh, we came close to blowing each other. Anyway, as part of that Operation Chrome Dome, a nuclear, nuclear armed B, Boeing B-52 called a Stratus Force bomber. They were flown to designated points just on the edge of the Soviet Union. Russia was today, Russia, as a deterrent to the Soviets, to the Russians. I realize a lot of younger people don't know the term. As amazing as it is to my generation, don't know what the term Soviets is. So the four bombers were on alert all day long. And these flights were conducted, by the way, without the knowledge of civilian authorities. The Danish government, I don't think, was told. On or about January 21, 1968, one of our bombers, the B-52, was assigned to fly near Thole, T-H-U-L-E, air base. Um, it's the northernmost base we had on the Danish territory in Greenland. And it, as I said, at four H bombs, it was otherwise a pretty normal flight, a six hour flight, uh, started fine. And then a fire broke out, the crew couldn't put it out. What had happened was a major Alpha Diamara, Diamario, uh, I shouldn't even mention his name, it's, I, I don't know why I did it. He made a, an honest mistake. He put a, a three cloth foam foam cushions on the top of a heating vent under uh, the instructor's navigation uh, seat in the aft section in the lower deck. And then shortly after takeoff, someone put another seat there and it caught fire. The captain declared an emergency and requested emergency landing at Thal. Minutes later, he flew over Thal because they couldn't land the plane because they had lost electricity. The cockpit was overwhelmed with this dense, putrid-smelling smoke. It rendered the instruments useless. Uh, emergency landing was almost impossible, so uh, they went down into the ocean. Six of uh, the crew members survived, but the co-pilot, Leonard Svitenko, he, unfortunately he died in this accident. The captain was found six miles away uh, from the base. He was lost in the ice for 21 hours. Imagine that. He's suffering from hypothermia. Uh, he survived because he wrapped himself in a parachute. The bomber had continued flying, as I said, over the base. It crashed into this shelf ice. Yeah, The hydrogen bombs detonated. I want to be careful when I so I say this correctly, on the impact, of course, but uh, the nuclear explosion wasn't triggered because of the design of the weapon. But still, you know, it, it, the detonation dispersed a huge nuclear payload and contaminated the area with radioactivity. And then there were gallons and gallons of jet fuel um, poured into the ocean as well. Uh, the, the ship sank, the plane sank. The entire area was filled with radio, radioactive contamination. So the Danes, understandably, I guess, they demanded uh, the nuclear material not be left in Greenland after the cleanup operation was complete. So the contaminated ice and the wreckage were packed in steel tanks and shipped back to the U.S. Uh, 700 specialized personnel from both countries, ours and Denmark, worked for nine months to clean up the site, usually without adequate protection, clothing, uh, because we didn't know these things at that point uh, about contamination. So, worse yet, one of the bombs had not been recovered, although the U.S. military insisted that all four bombs were destroyed. In 2008, there was a partially declassified document that appeared to confirm that within weeks of the accidents, investigators realized only three of the weapons could be accounted for, three of the four weapons could be accounted for. The Chrome Dome operation was suspended immediately after that. The Congress found out about it. They weren't happy. It caused this big scandal in Denmark uh, because the Danes had de designated themselves a nuclear free zone, which you can do when you've got you know the Russians breathing down your neck in the United States of America protecting you. 
Uh, yet the government officials knew that the U.S. Army was stockpiling weapons near them. So, In the U.S., the scandal deepened after it was learned that in 1966, the Defense Secretary McNamara proposed cutting the flights because they had been made obsolete by a new technology, but he couldn't discuss at that point what the technology was, and you just have to believe him, though they did have the technology, but it was secret. Also, cutting the operation would save the U.S. $950 million, a lot more then than it is now. So the SAC, Strategic Air Command, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, opposed the plan, and McNamara agreed to a compromise by allowing smaller planes, smaller bombers, placed on alert and kind of sort of do the same thing. SAC continued the operation without the knowledge anyway of civilian authorities um, who were told on a need-to-know basis about specifics of that operation. So, interesting.